good morning good afternoon and good evening to all uh people who have joined across the globe to hear a very interesting talk today organized by parthago sakinian leadership it's my great pleasure to welcome you all uh, as in the capacity of the chairman of the academy and uh, before we begin i would like to just request everyone to keep your microphone muted unless it is requested to make it on i mean like we'll have enough uh, time for question answer discussion at the end of talk so uh, let me uh, give you a brief about the academy of leadership we started the academy of leadership started journey in december 2021 and uh, now almost we are now one year old and uh, last one year we have uh, organized several uh, monthly uh, talks leadership talks uh, given by various eminent people and last month we started another interesting session that was a fireside chat session which was well attended and was mainly led by uh, mr r gopal krishnan and with his team and today uh, we uh, we have dr paul grumble who along with our distinguished alumni and founder of the academy dr ghosh will talk about leadership in era of artificial intelligence so let me introduce uh, dr paul uh, in formal manner informally from the academy leadership so dr paul is a seasoned executive with over 30 years of experience in developing and implementing strategic operational and organizational improvements for global enterprises and medium sized businesses dr paul grumbles educational background includes a masters and phd degree in computer science and economics from the university of karlsruhe germany and master degree in management from Manchester Institute of Technology MIT and Harvard Business School in United States as CEO of a digital company he focuses on implementing artificial intelligence into existing processes to drive efficiency and productivity so in order to uh, set up the tone of today's session or spirit of today's session may request dr ghosh to share his thoughts on the subject and to introduce briefly about dr ghosh he is the founder of the academy of leadership and he has been kind of like a leadership guru across the globe been and a true leader and he has been associated with the mckinsey and over the long period of time and then started with his own partho ghosh associates and uh, has been jana so dr ghosh over to you sir uh, thank you thank you shailendra uh, um, greetings to everyone from all over the the world um you know i would like to spend few moments to put building on what shailen the shared the academy the lectures that we had over the last 12 months or so and also try to put the how technologies have shaped organizational models leadership models in the 21st century so when i pass on to paul i could perhaps lay out the backdrop on which uh he will make his presentation now as you many of you know over the last 12 months we had the distinct opportunity to reflect on the challenges of our times from multiple perspectives socio economic geopolitical social ethical and of course business to understand how leadership profiles must be shaped in the 21st century through these discussions there has been an overwhelming consensus the world is indeed at a point of inflection and we do need more enlightened leadership models which draws on both eastern and western philosophies several if not all the discussion emphasized the need to develop the spiritual vector in our inner conscience with a fundamental emphasis on values and compassion ethics and integrity empathy and grit so that we can begin a movement which could create a more enlightened civilization and that is as you know is what the academy of leadership at iit kharagpur has committed to it is a movement that we have to participate we have to all participate if i may say in nurturing and popularizing a new paradigm of leadership which is significantly more enlightening more engaging and in the process enable more equitable society 
and I underscore the term equitable society. In today's session, we'll take a historical perspective to understand how the evolution of technologies over the ages have brought us to a point when we will require a fundamental rethink as how great organizations must develop their own leadership DNA. As a result, which might nurture leadership of organizations that organizations will need to cultivate. As you well know, since the beginning of Industrial Revolution 1.0, unleashing the power of steam with steam engine, we have come a long way industry 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, and where we today is defined by the basics of robotics, high-speed computing, big data analytics, 5G, 6G, 10G connectivity, Internet of Things. We talk about Internet of Machines, where machines will make the decision how they will interface with each other. The world is changing. But what is interesting to me, and I'm sure all of you realize, from Industry 1.0, which was to use the power of steam to leverage the muscle of human beings better, or reduce the usage of muscles, the steam could complement the muscles, to 4.0, which has been the leverage of the knowledge worker, or knowledge, uh, leverage of the intelligence, not so much the muscles, the basic equations of organizations, and leadership were based on time and motion study, division of labor, specialization of discipline, leading to command and control organization structure. And as we evolved through theory X, theory Y, theory Z, but unfortunately these terms remain as rhetorics and most of the organizational leadership models are still relics of the old industrial model where hierarchical model is still at work. And as a result, as you could see, leadership failures are happening at regular intervals, not to mention what happened with Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank, are fundamental testimonials of the shortcomings in today's leadership ethos. It pains me, it really pains me, and that's why we are together to explore how the new world the new world of AI could perhaps bring a new perspective. As you know very well, artificial intelligence has been a term which is known for the last 50 years. But in the last 10 years, it has become significantly more dominant force. And we must think differently. With artificial intelligence at work, it will be for the first time, it will free up our left brain it will free up our left brain. Perhaps it will require us to rely more on our right brain, which is the part of the brain which provides us the capacity to imagine, visualize, to be creative, and to be intuitive. However, our education system, in turn, the organizational leadership models, which we have evolved over the last 200 years, have indeed focused on the development of the left brain, which is logical, rational, typically less responsible for language processing, logical reasoning, and numer numerical computation. It is also associated with linear thinking and focuses on micro detail. So it is generally agreed, and I've talked to many experts in education and neuroscience, that many traditional economic systems have historically focused on development of left brain skills such as language, logic, analysis, but right brain skills in the process have not been developed as much. So today, as we engage with the subject of AI, the biggest challenge for humanity, for organization, for education system, that how do we switch? How do we switch the development of our right brain from left brain, not that we should neglect the left brain, but the role of the right brain will become very important so that we as a humanity remain relevant vis-a-vis -vis artificial intelligence. Because intelligence would, artificial intelligence would do all the rational work. Now, 
there is a growing consensus as a result, the importance of both the brains in education system has to be implanted. And what is good news, that there is some evidence to suggest that the spiritual development and the right brain may be linked as both are associated with the intuition, creativity, and imagination. Spirituality is often associated with the right hemisphere of the brain. It in involves a sense of interconnectedness, empathy, focus on the bigger picture as associated with holistic thinking and processing of emotions. Several studies have indeed pointed that spiritual practices such as transcendental meditation, prayer can help this and enhance the cognitive and emotional processing which is based on Vedic principle. So the point I want to make so far, when we have looked at the previous lectures from social, ethical, moral point of view, we talked about importance of Vedic philosophy. But as you would realize, when you look from a technological point of view, from the point of view of neuroscience, you will also realize the importance of the right brain and as a result, the importance of Vedic philosophy. So I feel extremely encouraged that the academy has been talking about the integration of Vedic philosophy with Western philosophy. And no one other than Paul Grumble is qualified to talk about these both these philosophies because he has grown up in the world of AI, grown up in the world of Western philosophy where the German philosophers like Kant, Immanuel, Max Muller has indeed celebrated much of the Vedic philosophy. So with this backdrop, it is my pleasure to present my very good friend, Dr. Paul Grumble, who has tirelessly, I want to underscore tirelessly, with two, three hours of sleeps over the last 30 years that I've observed him, have served the leaders in Europe in, on various issues, from macro to micro, to the development of the Bavarian economy, where he is located in the beautiful city of Munchen. We have worked together. We have really worked together, where we have spent early morning breakfast to late night dinners to one complex leadership issues in Germany, German automotive industry, in chemical industry. Furthermore, I want to underscore, Paul has also played leadership roles in digital companies where digital was not a fashion. Digital was emerging, where he leveraged the power of AI to increase the productivity of labor force. And final point I want to talk about, he, I've seen him in various board meetings, not too infrequently, not only impressed me, but the CEOs and boards of European multinational with his strategic thinking, his unique capabilities to translate complex challenges into actionable plans, to build consensus with multiple shareholders. So in short, he's a true technologist, a strategist, a humanist. So we are indeed very lucky to have Dr. Paul Grumble, his thoughts on how AI and NI, I mean natural intelligence, will come together in the new world that is emerging and what would be those in leadership challenges of the 21st century that we need to address. Paul, over to you. So thank you uh, for this uh, kind introduction from both of you. Uh, and uh, I'm really thankful uh, having the opportunity to present actually, I think, our joint uh, insights uh, partner to all of you uh, uh, today. Uh, and um, I will uh, actually share my, my screen with you so that we have a, a quite an efficient uh, kind of uh, presentation. And then we can um, actually ask questions. And uh, I think uh, if you want to have the presentation, uh, you, you, you are free to get it uh, because sharing is a very important uh, kind of uh, uh, ability uh, uh, in the end. Okay, so we'll, I will share my, my screen. Uh. So can you see my screen? Uh? Yeah. Okay. So leadership in the age of artificial intelligence. Um, and actually, I think the presentation is based on a recent book I wrote together with Pacha, The Future of Leadership, Blending Human and Artificial Intelligence, um, 
Um, and um, actually, uh, these are strategies for transforming organization into high performance artificial intelligence powered value creation. And you can get it if you want over the Amazon uh, bookstore. Huh? So um, I will concentrate on four major insights um, uh, in introducing artificial uh, in uh, intelligence for leaders who want to transform their organization. The first um, insight is unlocking productivity. Here, uh, I will answer the question how um, artificial intelligence can remove economic constraints in an unstructured uh, um, knowledge work. Then the second insight is competing in a connected world. Here, how artificial intelligence driven smart products are redefining competition and organization. Then number three, a new era of business here, the importance of personal artificial assistance in today's workplace for blending best humans and with new artificial intelligence. Uh, how to would say the right and the left uh, brain uh, come together. And um, that actually we end with the insight um, um, of the three eyes of leadership of the age of um, artificial intelligence, intuition, intellect, and interconnectivity a framework, which was pioneered by Parcher. So insight number one, unlocking productivity, how artificial intelligence can remove economic constraints in an unstructured uh, knowledge world. So this is the macroeconomic perspective of artificial intelligence. So let's uh, focus on the big uh, picture. And um, I think um, that we uh, really enter um, a new an age um, in humanity, uh, uh, which I call the augmented age. So humanity started with hunter and gatherers, and and, and it lasted millions uh, of years. I think the leadership principles have been quite interesting. It was uh, uh, ensuring survival by adaptability, collaboration, knowledge sharing. So I think uh, these uh, three uh, key leadership uh, um, uh, principles become very very topical again, and I think we have now millions uh, of years in experience. And the key tools at this time were stone, bone, spear, and boats. So then we have the agricultural age, um, which lasted um, uh, thousands of years. Then it came the industrial uh, age, uh, which lasted hundreds of years. Then we had the information age, um, which lasted tens of years. And now actually, I think we're entering a new age, which I call the augmented age. What is different uh, between uh, the ages, um, um, which we have seen before with the new one? It is actually the tools. The tools you know, um, shift in a very dramatic way because all the tools we had as a, from the stone age um, with stone, bone, spears, um, to computers, communication, a smartphone, and you know, the user had to direct the tools um, and the users had been passive. Now, with the advent of um, artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, robotics, we have now generative tools, also tools which solve problems a human cannot solve. So this is the first time a tool itself is uh, able you know, to augment uh, mankind uh, on themselves and not mankind has to direct the tools. Therefore, I think uh, uh, that the enhancing human capabilities uh, becomes very key for the leadership principles. So, it, so therefore, I think embracing artificial intelligence in an ethical way is very important. We have to have a culture of learning and also ethical responsibilities. I think these are the three major uh, key principles um, in the end. And I think uh, that really the generative tools make a big difference. And also, I think it's a, a great opportunity if we do it right for, for human uh, mankind um, on the global scale. So, and so actually, I think the um, uh, the leadership um, um, has to augment and um, blend human and artificial intelligence on three areas. Uh, first, augmenting thinking um, with uh, generative design and with machine learning. Then, actually, I think uh, um, robotic systems to help you make. Um, 
and digital nervous systems to connect beyond natural centers. So we have robotics and uh, additive manufacturing uh, in augmented making, and we have the Internet of Things, um, augmented sensing. Suddenly we can see things which, we, which was invisible before. So these are the three augmentation uh, areas uh, which has, have made big progress over the last uh, uh, 10 years. And the challenge of leadership uh, in the end is really blending human and artificial uh, intelligence so that the humans um, is the master and um, the computers um, are the assistant. Um, what is um, the impact of um, this um, human um, IE uh, collaboration? Uh, it is actually, I think, uh, a, a huge increase in productivity. Here's an example uh, from a pharmaceutical industry um, company where we could um, um, shorten the setup times for pharmaceutical processes from 10 hours to one hour. So it was a productivity increase by 10 times by, by cognitive augmentation using an um, augmented reality and um, assistance um, uh, for the workforce. So, uh, so we, we talk if we introduce um, um, in artificial intelligence and um, really a quantum jump, jump of productivity of knowledge work. I think that is uh, not only 10%. It is um, here in this example, and we will show other examples, you know, how mankind can really increase the productivity of unstructured knowledge work. Why is this important? Um, it is important while this is the only way to overcome, uh, if we follow the theory of Kontratiev, uh, the current crisis. Uh, what we have had now over the last 10 years, for instance, um, is interest rate at zero. Why are interest rate at zero? Because um, there is no opportunities for investments um, in, in a productive way. Yeah? So therefore, uh, people invested here in real estate and invested here in, um, in stocks. And, um, and this is a sign uh, which we have now experienced uh, at least five times. Um, um, uh, since the 1800s um, that um, uh, we have a crisis and uh, the crisis actually I think comes because there's a constraint on the key production uh, factors. So the crisis uh, in 1718 in, in England um, um, was overcome by the invention of the steam engine uh, because there was uh, a, a constraint in the mechanical um, uh, energy production and with the steam engine of James Watt and you know, uh, investments in steam engines in the textile industry, uh, mining, and um, uh, in the uh, steel industry uh, was possible. So we had again. Um, so and, and usually, I think, uh, and after the investments had been over, and you know, things are maturing, and um, and we got to the next bottleneck. The next bottleneck was transportation because it was not possible with the current, with the roads at this time, and also here with horses, you know, to transport um, iron and steel over long distances. So therefore, I think the um, railroad had to be invented. And there was also a, a boom, uh, you know, in investment here in railroads and also steamships. Uh, and um, in the end, uh, it, after it was finished, uh, um, we, we saw a big change uh, again, for instance, uh, no, I, I remember grain from the U.S. Uh, could be transported uh, to Eastern uh, Germany, and prices fell in three months by five times. Uh, so, so this was actually, I think. Uh, so then, actually, we had the, the next bottleneck was mass production. Uh, so the assembly line had to be invented, and then um, after the war, uh, we had the big boom of mobility. Cars um, and, and roads um, became the, uh, the driver for growth. Um, and um, <clears throat> in the 80s, um, in the crisis for oil, if you remember, where we had also a high inflation rate and, uh, and uh, an economic crisis, fortunately, the bottleneck uh, was um, structured information and the computer solved uh, the problem. 
So now, um, for structured information, all the investments uh, have been done more or less. And now we are in the, again in a crisis um, after the uh, theory of Kontradiev. Um, and the constraining uh, key factor um, is unstructured information. So how we uh, deal with uh, education, how, you know, at schools or at work um, is completely unproductive. If you need 20 years to be educated, uh, it cannot be in the long run a uh, very productive. Um, and therefore, I think um, artificial intelligence is the steam engine of the mind, uh, in my opinion. Uh, and this uh, it could be actually, I think, the solution uh, for uh, the next country out of cycle uh, bringing us um, away from the current crisis. So if you look, uh, for instance, at the development of, uh, <clears throat> of work in, in Germany, in 1800, we had 80% of the people were in, the, in agriculture. And um, you can see the productivity increase in agriculture with all the fertilizer, with tractors and so on. Only 2% in Germany are um, now working at agriculture and actually other kinds of uh, occupations uh, emerged like services, production, uh, here even in Germany, uh, the production um, uh, employment um, goes down since the 60s already because of industry 4.0 and uh, all the automation and what actually I think uh, emerged uh, that most of the people in Germany and all over the world are now in the information uh, business. Uh, and now we have a, a lack of um, um, skilled people in this way. So this is the, really the, the next constraint. And uh, artificial intelligence um, um, it could be the technology which uh, creates productivity in the sector. And what we have seen now, um, the economy increased in complexity and also in knowledge intensity. And maybe I think uh, we could uh, have a, a new sector of work, um, which is the creation sector, which could be growing. Yeah? So this is the right brain um, a kind of thing. So this is quite interesting that we have the constraint now is unstructured work. And um, if we look at, you know, these cycles um, are not going, you know, smoothly because you have to jump from what is called one S-curve uh, to the others. So we had um, here the industrial age, um, the constraint was paper-based information, and then actually the, in the information age came. And you see uh, also, I think the leaders in the industry changed. Huh? We had Exxon and Boeing and General Motors as the major companies in the US. And now we have Amazon, Google, Facebook, uh, and Apple. And now actually um, we have a constraint in unstructured knowledge and suddenly new uh, players uh, open up uh, like OpenEI, uh, who actually changed the world since November of last year. So this uh, kind of uh, presentation would not be possible um, if um, uh, you know, the availability of artificial intelligence by OpenEI with uh, chat GDP was not there. So the, the question is um, how um, we are shaping you know, this new S-curve, um, but it, it means we have to um, give up the old traditional kind way of thinking and starting actually a creative disruption um, and building up um, completely um, new ways of uh, managing unstructured knowledge. Uh, give you an example, um, which um, Pater and uh, I experienced. Uh, we wrote our first common book, Pater, in the, in the year 2002. Uh, this was the information age, uh, and it took us at least 120 days, uh, you know, to, um, from, from ideation to publishing, uh, because we have to type it our own, uh, every Every work we had to type, um, then we have editing, we have to find a publisher. And this was really um, a quite an intensive work. Yeah? So it take, took us 120 days. Now, three weeks ago, um, um, between ideation with Parcher and publishing the book at, uh, at Amazon, um, it was only one day. So it's a production as a productivity increase by 100. So, um, so, and, um, and this is actually, I think, um, uh, what leadership has to understand 
um, that um, you can really uh, relieve constraint, the constraint of unstructured knowledge uh, of the in information age uh, uh, in completely uh, new ways if you do it in a very ethical uh, and uh, in a great way. Also, so, so it means uh, we have seen 10 times to 100 times more productivity um, in, uh, in unstructured knowledge is the possibility. This is the, pos the opportunity which we uh, have. So inside number two, competing in the connected world, uh, how um, artificial intelligence driven smart products are redefining competition and organization. Uh, what is um, quite interesting, if you see, you know, the um, development of uh, IT um, into the uh, economy, so industry 1.0 and 2.0, we had mechanical products and physical processes, and all the information was paper-based. Then uh, industry 3.0 in the 60s, um, we first automated the value chain with mainframes and uh, medium-sized uh, computers. And then with um, the advent of the internet, um, we had <clears throat> you know, the connection over, over the, the complete value chain. But computing information was inside the value chain, it was not outside the value chain um, in the end. And now in the uh, 2000 uh, and now, um, we have the advent or the emergence of smart connected products. And this changes everything. Uh, because now um, the, the smartness um, is now no longer in the company or in the value chain. It is now in the product itself. And um, it is connected to the internet and you have uh, real-time uh, connections uh, with it. So it means the complete economy thinking is changing. Uh, so we started up, but uh, the best example is always here uh, from John Deere, the tractor business. Um, uh, so here the product was a tractor. You have been in the tractor business. It was, uh, um, I think, um, a very straightforward. Product generated revenues, the value chain forged competitive position and industry characteristics amplify the power of products and positioning. So, the, so it was very clear. Uh, Porter's five forces uh, for analyzing the industry was actually, I think, how you did the strategy. Now, uh, the tractor becomes now intelligence connected to the internet. Uh, so you're still in the tractor business, but uh, very soon uh, you could also connect uh, to all the equipment around the tractor. So you have been now in the, in the farming equipment uh, business. Um, and, um, and then actually, um, John Deere was um, able to orchestrate an ecosystem of all participants um, around um, farm management, um, also not only tractors and equipment, but also weather forecasts, um, seeds, uh, things like this. Um, so in the growing appreciation of ecosystems change the boundaries of industries. So you cannot say in what industry you are in, because now you are in an ecosystem and you have to manage the ecosystem, which is driven by data. What is also, I think, quite interesting uh, that the, the character of data is changing. So we, uh, uh, in the product business, we had what is called episodic data. This is data like transactional, how many tractors we have sold um, last, last month. Uh, this is uh, the typical um, kind of data uh, which, we, which we were focusing. Yeah? So we have management information systems, things like this, which we are relying on episodic data. Now, with, um, uh, with the smart connected products, suddenly you have interactive data. You could see, you know, um, how often the farmer was uh, using the tractor and 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 and, um, and 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 about the operations, things like this. Also, um, the engineers could spot um, improvements um, in real time. So we had interactive data, and this is actually, I think, um, um, where the U.S. and also China um, uh, went ahead of Germany. Yeah? So we still here in the episodic data business uh, in Germany, and uh, I think we have not understood the value of interactive uh, uh, data. And, um, and actually, uh, now, now we have a new understanding of data and vision of emerging structure of digital ecosystems and the new perspective of competitive advantage in the digital area. So this is actually, you know, um, uh, to summarize, smart connected products um, 
uh, changed the complete um, competition and also I think the organization in a new way. And um, this is where artificial intelligence, of course, plays a major role in differentiating um, in the ecosystem itself. So how does a company looks like in the future? <clears throat> so the center um, you know, of the business uh, model becomes the smart connected products. And um, the value architecture, of course, is still the value chain, which becomes more networked. So we have the product ecosystem on the one hand side, where you have connected machines, industry 4.0, and things like this. And on the other hand, you have the emergence of a second um, ecosystem, which is the, the consumption ecosystem, where you have complementers um, of your uh, product. Complementor, for instance, the car industry, you have a, you produce a car, but also I think the, um, um, you know, the filling stations, the street uh, um, information and so on are complementing things. Um, and, um, uh, and actually the value proposition is that you have a platform where, um, where actually the, the customer experience is uh, guided by this cons consumption ecosystem. So it means the value chain is gone. And now we have um, an artificial intelligence supported network on the production side, where you have also your suppliers, and also on the consumption side, where you have um, the complementers of your um, things. And the big um, uh, challenge strategically is, are you able to orchestrate this ecosystem, this consumption ecosystem, or are you only part of the ecosystem? Um, this is actually where the, um, um, the German car industry is just struggling to see, are we part of the ecosystem of Uber uh, or can we orchestrate a mobility ecosystem? Uh, this is uh, you know, um, uh, where the world is going right now. And this is actually, I think, the, the four stages, uh, how you transform um, first your production ecosystems uh, in the three steps. And then actually, I think uh, you have to think about your role here in the um, consumption ecosystem uh, so that um, your business model from the current state um, is changed um, you know in a, in a profound in a profound uh, uh, way so this was inside two inside three a uh, new area of business the importance of personal artificial intelligence assistance in today's uh, in today's uh, uh, world for blending best and human new artificial uh, intelligence. So this is actually, I think, how um, the new architecture looks like. Um, on the top, you have to amplify the human intelligence, train, test, collaborate. Um, here the suppliers, the research and development, production, logistics, and customers are now together in uh, these ecosystems. And here we have the first time artificial intelligence platform like ChatGDP, where you have all the knowledge of the world um, available. I mean, this is the big change that ChatGDP, you know, is had been trained the first time, and you know, from from all the, the data which is possible and could uh, be captured by by the internet in ev in every language, almost um, in every aspect. And um, what we have done now, we have developed um, an ecosystem of personal artificial intelligence assistance, where we connect, you know, this platform, um, for instance, for digital product management, um, where um, we can um, develop products much faster than before, then generative uh, additive manufacturing design, uh, uh, so that design is also generated, so you don't have to construct it, everything on your own, but you get suggestions. Then we have the smart factory. Um, this is actually industry 4.0, where we have the autonomous factory in the end. And we have digital exporting, um, where you can reach the world, um, as we have seen you know, in six months, um, 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 we have seen startups uh, covering uh, 150 countries in six months and not in 60 years, like it was uh, done before. So these are the three layers here, connect with um, EI, online services for on-demand intelligence, so prompt engineering becomes here a new kind of profession, so asking the platform the right questions. Then we have an ecosystem of assistance, um, which augment uh, the people here um, doing actually the work 
and you have to train them, test, and collaborate uh, um, in a way. So this is actually, I think, the, how we build, um, we blend human and artificial intelligence uh, with an ecosystem here of personal assistance. So this is an example of uh, personal assistance um, uh, creating new products. You streamline your product management with your personal IE assistance. Uh, and you can also uh, access um, uh, this thing you know, uh, on a worldwide uh, basis. And instead of, um, of um, six months, um, we can now uh, create, for instance, an IoT solution in two weeks. Uh, so this is also, I think, a uh, productivity increase by at least 10 times. Um, and what does it mean? Uh, it means for the competition uh, that you can out-compete um, your competition, which are bound by the, what is called productivity frontier trade-off. It means you have the choice as a competitor from a strategy positioning perspective uh, to have a low price with a low performance or have a high price with a and high performance. And actually, I think if you connect digital with physical, um, you can um, have high performance uh, to a low price. And uh, this changes the competition. And it also changes the organization, not a customer. And, um, you know, with uh, the smart connected product becomes the center. And uh, every function of the company um, is now organized no longer in hierarchies but actually in value network enabled also by artificial intelligence. So we have a change in competition and you have a change in, um, in, um, in the organization. And this is actually, you know, how we um, augment the different functions. Uh, so we give them, um, and, you know, a, a personal um, art, uh, artificial intelligence assistance so in the information age, everybody has a PC, yeah? personal computer. Now everybody has a personal uh, assistant uh, based on artificial intelligence, which makes you know, even a medium-sized uh, um, competitive um, uh, people more competitive. So the, uh, I was always asked the question, does, uh, does artificial intelligence replace workers? My answer is, it's not the case, but um, workers with artificial intelligence uh, will replace workers which are not using it. Uh, this is, I think, uh, very clear uh, to see because you have an advantage uh, if you are able uh, uh, to do it. So this is actually, I think, uh, uh, one of my uh, favorite um, examples of companies who, who already have done it. It is Procter and Gamble and with, um, uh, with a toothbrush, uh, uh, which I use it myself. So it is a toothbrush with artificial intelligence. And it gives um, actually, I think, over the smartphone information actually to the production system. And where, where he can see in, in, in real time, you know, um, how to improve um, you know, the experience of the customers. And at the same time, and I have a consumption ecosystem, it means, uh, you know, how I'm cleaning my teeth, you know, sees my dentist and also my insurer. Uh, so this is the extra consumption ecosystem. And it means uh, that if I am a reg regular, um, uh, you know, clean my teeth, um, so the insurance for my teeth goes down by 50%. Uh, so this is actually, you know, how a consumption ecosystem in the production ecosystem are working for the toothbrush. A Philips, for instance, has done it with um, smart lamps uh, because a smart home it can be equipped with uh, smart lamps uh, because uh, uh, a lamp is, is in every room. And if you make it more intelligent, uh, you can make it also as a security system, for instance. So even um, a, a very uh, uh, simple product can become more intelligent and can um, create ecosystems and consumption uh, ecosystems and create completely new values based on artificial uh, intelligence. Okay, inside four, the last one, it is what does it mean for leadership? Um, so we had um, at the old times, um, you know, where we had um, business engineering, Six Sigma, and um, Quality uh, was great, so we integrated the processes with uh, enterprise resource planning system like SAP. And the role model of the leader was Jack Welch. 
uh, at this time. Uh, he was really, um, you know, the hero uh, at GE, you know, uh, introducing all this um, the kind of Six Sigma. And, uh, um, but what he didn't do, um, he made GE very efficient, but it didn't make it very innovative. Uh, uh, so what we have seen, what we see now is, you know, a value network and the manager has to work a value network. So the, 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 the principles of Jack Walsh no longer work. Yeah? So you have to have other kind of role models. Maybe um, Elon Musk could be one of them. Huh? And, um, and actually, I think you need five different um, uh, capabilities. Um, to um, manage and lead a value network leading beyond the edge and existing capabilities. This you can do only with, um, an, with, with your artificial intelligence assistant. Because if you have an artificial intelligence assistant, you can always ask questions which you are not familiar with it and you get at least a, a good enough uh, response. So leading without uh, artificial intelligence, um, you are not able you know, to uh, uh, have the breath and um, the on-demand intelligence a leader needs. Then forming and leading virtual teams. Uh, so in times of Corona, we uh, already experienced um, how to lead virtual teams. Then empower uh, and building team with deep trust relationship. I think it's become very important that a leader is trusted uh, and, and also the members of the network are trusted. Uh, uh, each other, because otherwise a network is not function without a deep trust relationships. Then we have uh, collaborating and co-creating, as a sharing of information becomes uh, important. Huh? A sharing of information um, in universities is forbidden, huh? still in Germany at least. Huh? It's called cheating, and um, cheating is the new um, the new capability huh? um, in the end. And learning dynamically from each other customer interaction, also, also this is important uh, uh, to see, you know, uh, if you study five years, uh, for instance, computer science, uh, if you are finished, um, you know, what you have learned in the first two years is already completely obsolete. Uh, so, so I think learning uh, on demand becomes quite uh, important. And therefore, uh, for these five capabilities, uh, we invented also the personal uh, artificial intelligence leadership assistance. Uh, you can also have access to it uh, if you want. Um, and uh, so we can arrange it uh, with Parcher. And this is actually, I think, um, uh, the framework which developed Parcher, which actually uh, puts everything together with these three eyes, um, power of interconnectivity, power of intellect, and power of intuition. Maybe Parcher, you could uh, take over and uh, Finish actually, I think, um, you know, this presentation with your framework. Uh, Paul, I'm so impressed that you literally covered billion years from the early hunting society to the new hunting society, which is powered by artificial intelligence as opposed to stone. So the common denominator, I think, that you brought out is exploration that we have to continuously explore new frontiers of possibilities. And uh, the tools are different. Artificial intelligence is a new power, which we have to learn how to utilize because so far the powers that we have used, whether it's steam or computers, have been much more easy to relate with. But artificial intelligence is intelligence which had to interact with the inner intelligence and that's why i started with talking about the right brain and the left brain because our focus so far in both developing our companies when i see the way harvard business school teaches uh, different case studies uh, it is always basically measurable we always measure and that's how we end up serving the left brain and not really serve the right brain so the first point that I take from your presentation, that how do we activate our right brain in balance with left brain, as opposed to just be uh, left brain oriented. The second message that I feel where I want to explain the three PI model once again, 
the three PI, which is basically talking about three I's, intelligence, intuition, and interconnectedness. And interconnectedness and in, uh, between artificial intelligence and human intelligence would be very important to manage, which we have never managed earlier. So leaders of the future have to learn this new art. And how, what is the power of AI? You use a very powerful term, AI assistant. That means assistant is available to you 24 hours, which can bring all kinds of knowledge from all over the world at a speed of light. But which, when it, that is happening, how the other part of the brain uses that power effectively. So the difference between a successful company in the future versus less successful would not depend upon the human productivity, but the productivity of the brain. And that part we have not yet learned. So I see we are at the, literally at the very early stage of developing new leadership science, leadership art, and what I feel particularly good based on Paul, many discussions you and I had in the restaurants in Munich that um, and different parts of the world in, in New York and Boston, that uh, the Vedic philosophy, which you and I also discussed, somehow provides us some of the rudiments on which we could build the new paradigm of bringing AI and NI together. So that would be my kind of explanation, why this power of intellect, uh, intelligence, intellect, sorry, intuition, and interconnectedness comes together so that we as human beings can improve our ability to influence positive outcomes with or without titles. I always make the point that great leaders never needed titles. They make things happen because they believe in something with highest level of passion. And the final point I took from you is very important point, uh, Jack Welch point. Now, Jack Welch, as you know, you're right, when in the 90s we used to talk about it, I think you and I sometimes met him uh, during our work in GE, if you recall. Yeah, right. And he is a very impressive man. I met, had the privilege to meet him even before he became the chairman was when he was leading the chemicals and plastics business. But what is interesting to me, the failure of Jack Welch, and that's where it shows that we have to look at situations not vis-a-vis -vis how someone is doing today, because he did make G very efficient, Six Sigma, but he planted the seeds of failure of G, which G is struggling since Jack Welch left the company till today. The stock prices of G has dropped. G doesn't have a clear identity. It has given up a lot of the businesses. What Thomas Edison started with bulb and electricity, they are gone. The appliances are gone. So I think that also says that, you know, many business school te teach business and leadership based on case studies. But case studies of the past does not talk about the future. Right. So we have to now think of the education system reform of how to think about the future based on how different kinds of tools, as you have termed intelligence, artificial intelligence, robotics, and you know, advanced computing, advanced manufacturing, they come together. And the role of the leader is to be able to perceive the future and be able to create models of the future as opposed to relying on the past models. That's why Elon Musk is Elon Musk. Elon Musk did not follow the automotive models, nor did they follow any model, but he created his own model. So I also believe what you are saying, that we should be able to give our students the courage to create models of the future, as opposed to discussing what has happened in the past, unless we can bring out the lessons, which is more fundamental in nature, how do we cultivate courage? How do we cultivate compassion? How do we cultivate creativity? How do we cultivate imagination? And how do we cultivate ethical norms? So I think that's what I would take based on a brilliant presentation. And as always, Paul, your uh, mm -hmm. exhibits are very, very powerful. In each exhibit, you had, I would say, 1,000 pages of 
a text come, come built in in one exhibit. So with that, I would like to pass on it back to, uh, to I think, our Q&A session, I think, Commander Jaitley, who is absolutely brilliant in connecting many, many dots, many, many questions. I'll pass it back to Commander Jaitley. Uh, thank you, Partho, and thank you, Paul. It was really great. I somehow shifted to the machine age straight away, and I was just trying to imagine. And uh, there is one thing which we believe normally when we handle our people as leaders. There is always a tussle between head and the heart. And as leaders, particularly in India, I think most of the time, ultimately, we listen to our heart while dealing with the employees. I'm afraid if we hire these AI assistants for the top leadership, and AI assistant will definitely not have the heart, he will say straight away, hey guy, just fire this guy without bothering about his family background, how he is, he has got small children, his wife is pregnant and all those type of things, you know. No, it's not good for the company, just fire him out. How will we handle that? It's, it's really um, a challenge. Um, and the question is, um, um, in the end, um, the mindset. Um, and for instance, how we educate um, uh, people. And um, maybe I, I give you an example of how I uh, was leading in a university in Munich the last uh, two or three months after ChatGDP uh, came out. Um, actually, I think I gave every student of mine this assistant. And also, I allowed them uh, to use it in their final exams, which I think um, was, so I had a big heart huh, to give them. So everybody, you know, passed me A+, plus. everybody. But then, you know, the leader of the university came to me and said, Paul, you actually broke all rules of the university. The question is, who had now a bigger heart, my the superior of uh, uh, of the leader of the of the university or myself, who thought that um, uh, you know giving you know the newest um, kind of possibilities to the people and make the people better. And um, in the end, uh, and actually, I think from a um, um, perspective. I was cheered because now uh, 20 people got more than 100 points um, uh, with this kind of things. Um, and nobody actually um, um, you know, uh, was uh, left behind uh, in the end. Uh. So um, I think uh, no people should left behind uh, in this uh, area and therefore giving them uh, the um, possibilities uh, to augment themselves and make life easier. Um, is, um, I think, an interesting kind of thing. But all the rules, at least in Germany, yeah, cheating and uh, things like this. So, um, uh, so we have a, a hard discussion, um, and, you know, whether how to use it. Uh, but I think um, in, in the end, um, what is important, and I told, I told actually, I think, um, and my experience with Google, Performance is much more important than a certificate from the university. Uh, so, and if you can make a better performance with this tool, I mean, um, I mean, it, even the Stone Age, um, if you have a, a sharper stone uh, than your competitor, um, you survive better. So, <laughs> so, in my opinion, and now we have a very sharp stone um, and, and give it to the people as uh, much as possible. And I heard actually from the head of Microsoft a great story about India, because um, now farmers, uh, which has um, uh, to put in paperwork for the government, use this chat GDP uh, kind of things. And now even a, a farmer who was not able, you know, to uh, manage it, could manage it. Huh? So the question is, um, and I think um, uh, people who would forbid 
this kind of his assistance would have no heart, in my opinion. <laughs> this would be my, my, my experience over the last three months uh, after we, we have this opportunity. I don't know, Pato, how, how you see it. Uh, Commander, I would, uh, yeah, thank you very much, Paul. Commander, I would like to add one point, you know. I think as AI becomes more and more dominant, clearly on one side, it would be about productivity of people, productivity of intelligence, productivity of how we make decisions. But as a result, the development of leadership, in fact, next week at uh, Tufts Gordon Institute, we are having a leadership immersive session. And I feel should focus on not the productivity bit, but how to cultivate the imagination so that as you become productive, you create new possibilities for people, not to fire them, someone who's pregnant. You're absolutely right. We have to be more compassionate. And that's why, as you know, we have always talked about importance of compassion in leadership, importance of creativity. And creativity means when I'm making our people in a company productive, okay, what is the next frontier I could explore to expand the business, to make society best? So that would be the challenge that we have to work on in our academy to build the future leaders. There is one question from Shantanu Sharma. He just wants to know that various models will be there for this artificial intelligence uh, and all that. How will you ensure that a model which we use is not biased towards some individuals, to some group of people, or uh, is harmful to some specific people, etc.? So how will you ensure that? No, actually, I think um, uh, the best thing is if you have competition about fundamental models. Um, and so now we have Microsoft, we have Google, and we have others. And uh, actually, I think um, you should um, uh, use it. And what is uh, uh, quite great, these models are learning. They are learning from you, from your input. Uh, and actually, I think um, um, you can make them, you know, and as you want um, in the end, uh, because this is not a, 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 a fixed kind of program anymore, uh, but it is learning from your data and your input um, in the end. And what we have now with ChatGTP, uh, they actually tried hard, in my opinion, to have the complete knowledge of the world. Also, Americans, Indians, Germans, and so on. Huh? And the question is, um, I think this is as broad as it can get huh? in, in the end. I mean, it's still biased, but bias is always in the eyes of the beholder. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, there's one question from Sumans. Okay. Uh, there were many references to machine learning and artificial intelligence. It would be good to hear what is your opinion and the difference between the two. Actually, you have um, these three uh, areas. The broadest area is what is called artificial intelligence, um, which is there for 60 years. And Stanford started, I think, the first institute 60 years ago. And then actually, I think over the last 10 years, and as part of artificial intelligence, and um, machine learning uh, was uh, developed. This was the first time with supervised learning and unsupervised learning, um, where you have a software program, which the first time um, had not to be programmed to do exactly what the program says, but were able um, actually to learn. And now with deep learning, which is a, again a subset of machine learning, um, uh, you, you have these large language models, for instance, uh, at uh, ChatGDP, which, which do amazing things. Uh, I'm really amazed. Uh, you know and uh, what it can it can do um, uh, I, I could not believe it uh, to be honest and also my students could not believe it that um, you know they passed their exams uh, which is very tough in germany yeah with 100% uh, and, and it, it was it was quite quite interesting. so we have artificial intelligence as the broad um, thing also robotics and and all this this thing is part of it then we have um, you know a subset is machine learning and the subset of machine learning is deep learning. Okay. Uh, Indro Neil, he is joining one management college. He wants some ideas how he can implement some AI in those aspects. Yeah, he can uh, use my platform. Huh? So it is the easiest way to, to, to do it. I can get, I mean, I can share the link uh, if you want in the, in the chat or whatever. 
if, if this is appropriate. Okay. Uh, when will legal regulations catch up with artificial intelligence? Never. What will be the litigations <laughs> expected? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's important, uh, of course, uh, that you talk with the regulators uh, and in the end uh, that misuse, as I like every technology, uh, uh, even cars can be misused uh, uh, if you do it not uh, correct. Uh, so therefore, um, um, you have to educate first uh, uh, the educators. Uh, and I have a little bit experience with the Bavarian government since 20 years educating them. Uh, I still educating them, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, what should have been done 20 years ago, and uh, they're still uh, learning. So in the end, um, I think uh, you have to be creative, you have to, to try things out, and the regulators, you know, uh, should um, also be aware that um, if misuse um, is, is there, um, you know, that it, it, it should be uh, prevented um, uh, in the end. This was actually in, in every kind of uh, invention. Uh, look at uh, good manufacturing practices in uh, pharmaceutical. Huh? Uh, so after every incident, um, uh, you know, we had a new regulation. Huh? This is like in airplanes. If they crash, you have to analyze um, what it is and, and, uh, and have, um, uh, because you cannot um, forbid everything. Huh? Um, for instance, at the beginning, um, uh, this is uh, not how human uh, progress uh, is made. Huh? But I think if you, if, if um, a misuse becomes evident, uh, it becomes uh, clear um, okay. you know, how, how, how to do it. Uh. The last question was from a commander from the ex-Indian Navy, Commander Raj Gopal. There is another question from Colonel Haridas. How should military leaders change in the era of artificial intelligence to make their command more successful in the future? <laughs> Um, no, I think artificial intelligence uh, plays um, a big role um, uh, in there. For instance, um, give you a very current example. So, um, actually, um, the Russians asked ChatGDP how to destroy a German tank, and they get and they got a very um, a, you know a detailed description how to destroy a German tank, and it now becomes um, um, actually I think. Uh, and uh, the advice of Russian soldiers how to do it. And this is one, so you could say, look, this is misused, uh, but um, um, but um, in the end, um, uh, also, also in the, everybody becomes more intelligent, uh, or even the military. Yeah? Uh, okay. Uh, in the end, you cannot avoid it. Uh, uh, in, the, and in the end, and I think if every soldier is equipped with an artificially intelligent uh, uh, assistant, not only with a night goggle or whatever, I think um, his survival uh, will be higher than if you don't have artificial um, intelligence um, in the in the end. This is like preventive maintenance. Eh? Uh, I think um, it is it is great um, uh, in the military uh, that you know before you are shot down eh? uh, that you prevent it. Eh? Um, um, in the end, uh, and, and therefore, I think prediction and prevention is one of the key uh, elements uh, uh, of um, of um, um, and also I think if you see warfare has changed forever. Um, we have drones, we have artificial intelligence. The Americans helping the Ukraine with uh, artificial intelligence in a big way. So you see the information war is already there, and I think, um, and, and in my opinion. Every soldier should have an, also a personal assistant to be safe. Okay. Uh, R. Gopala Krishnan says India has been and largely continues to be volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous, more so than others at any point of time. Indians will take to AI readily. The deep rooted belief that many Indians have in karma, uh, they are Vasudeva Kutumbakam, will stay with them in leveraging. AI. The key question is, how can India teach and globalize compassion? We have a lot of compassion. So how can we teach to the whole world and globalize it? Maybe Pato, you could. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I, think, uh, I think Gopal could answer this question because Himself. <laughs> I'll pass it back to Gopal. But I think. Okay, we have got uh, hands the... from Major General D.N. Khurana ji. Yeah. Yeah, Kurana, sir, please go ahead. 
Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Paul, for an excellent um, presentation. Uh, to both you and Dr. Patha, I have two, uh, two points that are not very clear. My first point is, as it is, the technology was changing and advancing at such a pace that there was a differentiation coming within the countries, within inside the country, within organizations, within societies. And therefore, there were people who were uh, doing too well, and there were people who were just left behind. So the AI, as I've understood in so much greater detail today, is going to make it even worse. And therefore, it's going to cause a, a kind of a inequality, which might lead to social or um, uh, I don't know, economic um, uh, problems. That's my first question. My second question is that in your presentation, Dr. Paul, yeah. you came to right in the end towards the qualities of the leaders and you touched on compassion and empathy and you know those human qualities which yeah. are Vedic learning teaches us as prime and which have all along been also in a manner of speaking, the Western qualities, but they have not put so much stress. As I see it now, and this is where I'll take off probably from the commander, that I think it will require an equal amount of stress to teach them how to use the AI in leadership as much it will require now, maybe more stress, how to use these qualities of leadership which have remained uh, important and ever, ever uh, uh, green. So how would you answer both these questions? Both of you may kindly throw some light on it. I will take the, uh, Paul, I'll take the second one. You two take the first one. Right. <laughs> oh, should I take the first one? Uh, so the first one is, um, and actually I think we have to learn from, from uh, history. Yeah? Because uh, if you see, we have now, uh, f five contrariative cycles, also up and down and, and big changes. So the first cycles, we had Great Britain as the global leader, um, you know, for steam engine and also railroads. Um, and uh, they organized it, but they, they didn't actually make the leap to mass production, uh, to chemical and uh, kind of things uh, like the, the Germans and the US uh, did it. And now the Germans were able, you know, to do the, the chemical and mass production and steel and also the automotive. But we missed actually, I think, what India did, you know, the leap to the digital world. Huh? We didn't do it. And now we miss it out also on the, um, on the, uh, on, on the second one. So, so inequality comes um, not only on the, on the micro level, it becomes actually on the state level. And if you have the leadership of a government um, is not actually, I think, um, an incentive-wise um, new kind of um, um, of possibilities, you know, the country will suffer because England is uh, now much behind. Uh, I mean, actually, uh, England uh, governed India once, uh, if I'm correct. Uh, um, <laughs> in the end, now it's vice versa. That an Indian is now prime minister of uh, of uh, of uh, of Great Britain, uh? and therefore I think um, and and I have talked to the leadership um, of Bavaria, and I say, look, um, you have to embrace artificial intelligence. You have to uh, to put it in schools, in universities, and so on, because only with a tool um, uh, which is uh, modern, we we will prosper, we will become productive. And we should not protect the past from the future. I think this is um, what uh, my message um, um, would be. And now I think we have a world in two in two areas. To be honest, uh, we see uh, immediately that um, countries like India and China and other countries, um, um, Saudi Arabia, for instance, you know, they are really ascending. You know, they are going ahead, uh, and Europe and the U.S. Is going down, uh, not uh, not only for geopolitical reasons, uh, um, in, in the end, but uh, you can see it very clearly. And also, I think if you see how many 
uh, how, how the, the Chinese government, uh, this is what my knowledge is, invest in artificial intelligence. They have even towns uh, where artificial intelligence um, is embraced. And I think India is also there. Actually, the, the, uh, the, um, the, the, mo the country which has the most um, uh, visitors on my side come from India. And uh, so the second is, um, is actually um, uh, US. Then we have Norway, and, and the Germans are quite skeptical uh, in the end, uh, this, to, be, to be honest. So I'm a little bit uh, an outlier, uh, if you want, uh, in, in this one. Okay, second question, Father. Well, on the second one, I think you've uh, partly touched on it. Uh, I think the two points that we have to keep in mind. The first is that you're absolutely right, um, Major General, that to evolve the new leadership model, we have to get out of the old leadership model. Unfortunately, there has been a significant momentum and legacy of the past model. And the new model, which, which, which again, as I keep underscoring, has to be significantly powered by our right brain. I think we have to think using Paul's term, moving from AI to augmented intelligence is how do we augment our mindset? How do we augment our brain towards the other AI, which is the awakened intelligence? I think that transition is a tough one. It's an easy rhetoric, but that's where I feel the Academy of Leadership has a role to play to help civilization, not only India. Of course, India could provide the lead because much of the transition would be based on the power that we could draw from the wisdom of Vedic philosophy. And that's where I feel extremely passionate. So the wisdom is there. Now the question is how to help the world, help our civilization, help our nation to transition, not AI just as a tool, but to augment our, uh, if you will, presence in society and in the press process, create a collective awakened intelligence. So it has to come through the education process. It has to begin at a very early stage. So if the academy is successful, we have to go back to the kindergarten levels and begin from there to people who are graduating from universities. So we have a major task ahead and we have to work on it. And I'm glad it is coming out very loud and clear through this discussion. Uh, there is a question from Paul Drones Logistics. It is written. He just uh, wants I, to know. Commander, Professor Bondapada has been raising hand for a long time. Okay, Larry think, Kaufman uh, is also raising hand. I know, uh, I know. Uh, too, too many questions, too many questions. And Larry Kaufman Great. is there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, Professor Bandhapadhyaya, please go ahead. Professor Bandhapadhyaya. I'm from Australia. Thank you. Okay. Can you be a bit louder? A bit louder, please. Can't hear. No. Okay. Uh, Paul Jones Logistics, he wanted to know, how does this personal AI assistant look like? And wouldn't it be better to have a shared assistant that will be more valuable than the personal one? Actually, if you look at my link, um, you will see that every personal assistant can be shared on a global scale. Huh? As a personal assistant, I mean this is a personal assistance for product developers or for supply chain managers or for your sourcing specialists huh? or, for, or for managers um, who, uh, who want to um, augment um, their, their skills. Uh, so personal means... Um, uh, not um, uh, it's a shared uh, kind of uh, uh, possibilities, but it actually I think um, focuses on the context of the person. So all developers um, uh, who do digital products uh, can use this pers this one personal kind of assistant. Um, and if you are in manufacturing and want to do Industry 4.0 the German way, you have another assistant. Um, because um, I think this this is actually how the uh, I define personal assistance. And if you look at my, at the link I put into the chat, uh, uh, then you can experience the the different. Um, I think that I have fifteen categories of personal assistance. If you want, 
Okay. So you mean to say that personal assistant could look like a beautiful robot, lady robot, or it yeah, could be uh, just an app on the computer? It's a, yeah, of course. Uh, you have access, uh, you know, to the, uh, to the, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it is an access, it's an app on the computer. Yeah. Or it could be robot also. It could be robot yeah. also, intelligent robot also. Both yeah, possible. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, Larry Kaufman, please go ahead. Larry, yeah. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, I've attended many of these monthly uh, leadership conference or uh, leadership academy talks. And I know that Partha's leadership academy has international reputation, a very good one. But I have not seen very uh, specific increases in the, the in the numbers of leaders that are being produced by the academy, and I think they can do more. So my question is, how can should how can AI be specifically used by the academy <laughs> to help develop and accelerate the production of world class leaders? Very good question, Paul. Okay. Actually, I I have a, you know a personal assistance for world class leaders. Um, uh, I can give you also the the access to it, uh, and it it augments a medium leader uh, to a world class uh, leader. Uh, to be honest, my experience comes from um, playing chess uh, because you you know ninety seven that was the first time when a computer was beating the world champion in chess uh, with big, uh, deep blue uh, from IBM. Uh, and now it becomes clear um, a medium um, capable chess player together with a computer can um, beat computers, even the best one, and also it can beat the best uh, champion without uh, a computer. So I think if you uh, combine, like uh, Patrick suggested, um, a leader uh, and augment him, uh, I think the, the chances that he become excellent, the chances will be increasing. There is one question from Matthew Corrado. He wants to know how can artificial intelligence be utilized to accelerate resolution of the climate crisis, which the whole world is facing today? And uh, AI revolution to bring the solution to the climate crisis, he wants to know. Now, I think artificial intelligence, in my opinion, is the only uh, way, um, uh, you know, only hope um, uh, to solve it becomes because it's so complex. And actually, I think um, artificial intelligence, um, with all the different kind of knowledge, um, it can accelerate um, research. So if, ex if research in, in, in solution of climate crisis can be accelerated by a factor of 100, things will have a big impact. Um, uh, uh, on it. Um, it. The same thing is for cancer. Um, if the research can be in, um, increased 10 times or even 100 times in research, which is possible, and then actually I think um, we will see much bigger results uh, uh, in the end. This is my experience. Uh, um, uh, in the end. Uh, so, so, so I think um, artificial intelligence, in my opinion, can, is able to help uh, solving complex problems, um, which are very complex and very knowledge intensive. Okay. Uh, there are too many questions from Satish Tiwari, Sanjay Gadle, Shoman Saha, and uh, there are Jagdish Sharma. And Jagdish Sharma has got a lot of questions. And I tell you, there is no time. Pawan Singh also wanted to ask something. Shriram Singh, Pawan Verma. Dr. S. Chakravarti. So I think uh, the time is getting over. So I will straight away now go to the last question from Parthogosh himself. Oh my God. Last question <laughs> from me. So, Paul, uh, I think the question that Larry asked that indeed, you know, we had had very, very rich discussions in this forum over the last 12 months. Thanks to the leadership of IIT Kharagpur, thanks to Commander uh, Professor Vashne, Professor Trilak Singh, they're working hard. But it is a fact, as Larry pointed out, maybe we are not moving as fast as we should. The fact. What would you suggest 
that given the AI assistant, if AI assistant is available to Dr. Vashti, the chairman and the vice chairman, how will they use it to really begin this movement? Because all of you have pointed out, including the questions raised and the discussions before, that we do need a new leadership model. And seems like we do have the basic elements in place. Now we cannot sit on it and when we see the world is falling apart, whether it's climate, whether the Ukraine-Russia war, whether it's Silicon Valley Bank, every bloody uh, month, three months, we see problems. So what would you recommend and how can you get involved to get this thing moving? Actually, I already put in the, the, the latest link, um, you know, to the um, to the personal leadership um, assistant, which I worked together with the University of Boston. I think the University of Boston, in my opinion, uh, is one of the leading universities in terms of digital leaderships. So these five areas leading beyond the age um, and, you know, um, managing virtual teams and dynamic learning, all these things, you know, are embedded uh, into this assistant. And um, the only thing is, um, um, you know, a leader needs, like everybody, on-demand intelligence. I mean, you, you cannot study uh, five years leadership um, and hope, you know, that you can use it. Um, because if a situation arises, the information intelligence and uh, information should be there in real time, on-demand. Um, and therefore, I think um, we have um, created together with the University of Boston, uh, Boston University, and um, you know this uh, a kind of assistant, which gives every leader uh, instant or the on-demand intelligence uh, for leadership issues uh, when they arise, not just in case. Okay. Uh, so, so this thank is you actually... very much, Paul. Uh, <laughs> okay. The time is running out. There okay. Are so many questions. My apologies to all those who have asked. So many intelligent questions in the chat box. Right. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now I will request Tarlok Singh, Professor Tarlok Singh, to give a formal vote of thanks, please. Okay, I think uh, we are in the same room, so Tarlok, because as well as Blue Eco. So on behalf of Tarlok, uh, I I would express my uh, sincere thanks to Dr. Paul Grumble who Thank has uh, taken his time, reported time, and share his thoughts on AI and how the human brain can be augmented, right? Human intelligence and the AI, so there's going to be competition between AI and uh, HI or NI, right? So definitely is going to be a lot, uh, lot of things, going to be benefits, and in terms of societal impacts, is going to be help a lot. The augmented is, as you rightly pointed out, Dr. Grumble. So thank you very much for You're your welcome. insightful talk and really is, has, uh, uh, let's say, going to be left, right brain, going to find a balance. I know it's going to be balance or it's going to be get it empty and get the left brain to be uh, augmented and the right brain is going to be like, as uh, uh, Dr. Right. Paul has pointed out more, <laughs> more on kind of like uh, compassion. You have the interconnectivity, everything is to be. So all neurons now, I think, I hope all of the attendees who attended your neurons must have taken a lead <laughs> <laughs> and a fantastic uh, great session. Thank you very much, sir. And the You're recording. Can you take uh, a picture? picture. Yeah. Yeah. So now, please switch, switch, on on yeah, please switch on your videos. Please you. switch on your videos so that we have a group photograph. Switch on your videos. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, we can uh, please yes, switch on your ca uh, camera so that we can take a one group photo. Uh, we'll take it. Unmute your videos. Wow, great. Smiling faces, so many of them, great. <laughs> Anybody having artificial assistant already with him? Artificial <laughs> assistant, <laughs> so assistant yeah. anybody? No. Great. Stephen, nice to see media? you. I thought Stephen, by the way, there's one very special gentleman. Stephen runs Interlearn. And he is basically digitizing uh, connectivity between different education centers. We'll talk about Stephen. We we can have a session with you sometime. Well, I'm very grateful to participate. I've learned so much today from all of you who have contributed, especially from Paul and you, Parker. 
Uh, and I like Larry's question very much. How could we work together, even you and I and the team, to expand the Leadership Academy breadth? Thank you very much for this uh, this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So, thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.